Uh, good morning, and uh, uh, thank you all for um, having come. Uh, I'm Francesco Giavazzi, and I teach at Bocconi. Uh, the Innocenzo Gasparini Institute, whose birthday today we are celebrating, is the result of two uh, things, a simple idea and uh, the generosity of many friends who gave us uh, throughout these 20 years uh, their time and uh, their reputation. So my job this morning is simply to say thank you to all of them. Um, it's a long list, so it will take uh, five minutes. But let me start from the simple idea. Uh, by the early 1980s, 83, 84, it was obvious in Europe that the gap between uh, European economics and economics on the other side of the ocean was widening at an increasing uh, speed. Uh, and the first, I think, who realized it and tried to uh, stop this widening gap was Richard Portes, who in 1983 created CPR on the model of the National Bureau. Uh, CPR uh, has been, as we know, a big success. It was, CPR was very useful for individual economists by organizing conferences, projects. It was less useful for institutions, for the university, because it was an outside uh, entity. So uh, around that time, um, er, in different European countries, not, not only here, some people thought of how to change uh, economics in the uh, departments. I have to be very careful in what I say here. <laughs> but the idea was it was very difficult to change the department from inside. The, the best strategy was to create outside research centers that would eventually contaminate uh, in a positive way the department and the university. Uh, Eger was not the first of these examples. Uh, there were others. Uh, many of them were failures. So this uh, research center started and then eventually uh, died out. Uh, I think the reason why Eger started and, and survived is because we realized one, uh, that we needed one out, we needed outside reputation. So it was not enough to create a uh, local institute. You, you needed to create an institute where you had outside high, high reputation uh, institution involved. And that's why Eger started uh, as a joint initiative of uh, Bocconi, of uh, the National Bureau in the US, and, um, uh, and CPR. Um, and in the board of, uh, of Eger since the beginning, the three institutions are represented. Now, the board of Eger uh, never met, except maybe the first time. And it's a good example of a credible threat. Uh, very rarely, I think, in these 20 years, I have memory only twice, where we had some problems uh, in uh, bringing Eger ahead, and the simple hint that we might have to, uh, to ask Marty Feltz and Richard Portes to take a plane to Milan and, jo and join a board meeting was enough to solve everything within an hour. So it's a, um, I think this, uh, but I really think that this was what made Eger, the Eger experience different from, from other experiences. Uh, of course, uh, over time, over 20 years, uh, the initial objective, which was to contaminate uh, the university and Bocconi um, worked. And uh, I mean, Bocconi did many things by itself, but I think the presence of Eger was a positive, had a positive effect on the evolution of the university, which has completely transformed in 20 years. Now, who are the people behind this? Uh, I think there are four people. Uh, the first is uh, Mario Monti, who, when we started Eger, was rector of Bocconi. Uh, Mario never said it, but I think that he understood from the beginning what he was doing, namely that he was creating something that would eventually change the university. Being a very careful person, he never admitted this, but I think he perfectly understood from the beginning what was happening. Um, and then, of course, Marty Feldstein and, and Richard Portes. But I want to remember another person which was uh, instrumental in starting everything and who is no longer with us, Bill Branson. Uh, Marty Feldstein was, at the beginning, understandably uh, very cautious about spending the NBR name. It was the first time the NBR was doing something outside the US, and he was very cautious. And it was Bill Branson who, um, if over a few months, convinced him to, to do it. Um, then uh, we started. So uh, we started with a program of postdoctoral fellowships in 1990. There were six postdocs in 1990. And then over time, uh, the number of postdocs uh, increased. 
Uh, another element of the outside reputation is the selection committee for, for the postdoc, which was very important at the beginning. Uh, the first chairman of the selection committee was Stan Fisher, who was kind enough to be here today. Uh, that particular selection committee was very interesting because another um, uh, suggestion of, uh, of Mario Monti was uh, go for diversity. Don't have something in particular in the selection committee that would look Yankee or only American. And Mario had a very good idea. He suggested Augusto Graziani. Nobody knows who Augusto Graziani is among you. Augusto Graziani is a very good Italian um, uh, economist now. He's uh, relatively old. Uh, I would put him certainly on the extreme left of the political spectrum, many slots beyond what was the Communist Party. And it's more difficult to, to place him in terms of economic. He certainly was uh, also on the, if there is a, a spectrum in, in economics, on the left of the spectrum. And, uh, but this gave us credibility. It was obvious that who was selected was not uh, Stan and the MIT connection that got there. Uh, the interesting thing that I mentioned, Professor Graziani, is that Stan and Professor Graziani would come to the, um, to the meeting of the scientific committee having tied their hands. So they used to write down on a piece of paper the ranking, there were many applicants, the ranking of the first five applicants. And uh, very rarely, uh, I used to look at the rankings before anticipating a disaster, uh, very, very rarely uh, the rankings differed. And so the meeting used to take five minutes. Um, <laughs> why uh, the name, why Innocenzo Gasparini, another person that uh, many of you never heard. Innocenzo Gasparini was the rector of Bocconi before Mario in the early 80s uh, and uh, passed away a few years before we started uh, each year. Uh, Innocenzo Gasparini, and uh, let me thank his wife who was nice enough to come here with us today, was a very unusual Italian economist. Uh, after graduating, uh, just after World War II, he received the Rockefeller Foundation Fellowship and went to the US. He visited uh, first Stanford and then Chicago, then eventually came back to Italy and became a professor here and was here for, for a very long time. Why was he very different? Because uh, at that time, late 50s, early 60s, any bright Italian economist that you may have met would go to Cambridge, England uh, to study with Piero Raffa and uh, destroy, in my view, his life uh, uh, <laughs> studying, uh, studying the switching. Some of them have been lost. Others eventually, like Luigi Spaventa, sort of realized uh, what they were doing and changed. But uh, Luigi Spaventa, for example, spent 20 years of his, li of his life working on the switching. Uh, Professor Gasperi understood that and uh, sent all of his students, or most of his students, to the US, a few of them to Oxford, but very far away from Cambridge. So <laughs> I think that um, if he had been here today, I think he would be uh, happy of what we have done in, um, in his name. Uh, so we started in 1990 with six uh, postdocs. Um, they were financed by the European Commission. The Commission understood uh, early on that this was an interesting project and gave us a significant grant whose title was Reversing the European Brain Drain in Economics, and I think is one of the good ways that the European Commission spent uh, its money. Uh, over the years, there have been about 100 postdoctoral fellows that have come to Egypt, some for a year, some who eventually found in Bocconi their permanent house. Um, whom uh, should I thank? Well, in terms of people, the various members, I mean, the, the governing council was not only the three I mentioned, at various points, George Galli was part of the governing council, Steve Cecchetti, who I think should be coming now, Giuseppe Bertola, Franco Peracchi, and then the directors of each year, uh, Guido uh, Tabellini, um, Roberto Perotti, Carlo Favero, and our recent director, Maristella Botticini. And of course, the people without whom EJ wouldn't work, uh, Luisa, Laura, Ornella, Melissa. Uh, what has been the outcome? Uh, I've looked at the outcomes. In the first 10 years, uh, there are 157 uh, eager working papers. Out of the 157, 100 eventually got published, 25 in uh, top six journals. I say top six as opposed to the usual top five because Eger always had a very strong presence in theory, so I add Jet to, to the group of the top five. So um, I'm sure that Pierpaolo will agree with me. Um, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, 
in the following uh, in the following decade, the number of top six journals jumped from 25 to 50. And so I think this was a um, was a good uh, achievement. And along with those um, with those publications, we got four uh, ERC grants. ERC, for those who don't know, is the successful European attempt at creating something like the National Science Foundation in the US. And I think, I don't know exactly, but four ERC grants makes Eger one of the places that had more ERC grants in the first round. Uh, that's all. So I think that uh, especially the students who are here and who knew nothing about the history now know a bit more. Uh, what about these two days? Uh, Eger has many different areas, so it was impossible. We had the choice. Either we had a conference on one of the area, making everybody else unhappy, or we found a different format, and Maristella found this format, whereby for each of the areas we will have a, a discussion about what we have achieved in the past um, 15 years and what lies ahead in terms of interesting research questions. So I think, it, I think it is useful at some point, uh, certainly it is useful in macro after what happened, but also in other fields, to stop for a second to look back and look forward and ask uh, what we are doing. And uh, we have chosen two persons for each of these subjects, not because we want to debate, although the two persons you realize don't have collinear views about, about the subject, and there will be time to ask questions and to discuss. Thank you.